Now in our sixth year, this is GabNet, the great American broadcast network. Talk like you've never heard it before. States of America. Ladies and gentlemen, the smiling face you see in front of you is coming now to us. Is, co- <laughs> it's, is coming to us from the smoky environs of Lake Oswego, Oregon. Boy, you have had some problems there, haven't you? Tell me, tell me. I can. I don't know how long we can go today because I'm having trouble breathing. We we'll go as long as you can. I can. I. We don't have to do all 25 minutes. We can do 15 because that's what I normally do with everybody else. But you. But because you're special, I give you 25. <laughs> um, Isn't that interesting for 25? Yeah. Uh, to begin with, you have COPD, which is <laughs> greatly affected by this. In fact, are you uh, not on the oxygen right now because we're talking or? Uh, is it okay? Um, I was using it earlier. There's, I also have a nebulizer I use that opens up my bronchial tubes, and I do that four times a day, which I've done. As soon as we're done here, I'll do it for a second time. And, um, you know, as I, if I sit, I'm fine. I can't, even without smoke, I can't walk very fast. Mm-hmm. Uh, without losing my breath and that sort of right. thing, but it's um, and I haven't been outdoors since I don't know Saturday maybe. I have a wonderful ne- neighbor named Judy, mm-hmm. who let me know she was going out for a quick few minutes. Did I need any yesterday? And did I need anything at the store? And I was out of milk and a couple of other little things, so she brought those to me. But um, it's a uh, you know, it's there. There's no name for the color of the sky out here. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I mean, it looks all pretty in the places where it's orange, mm-hmm. as terrible as it is. Mm-hmm. It's not orange here. It's somewhere between brown, green, dingy. Uh, you know, and <laughs> and and the air quality, the little meter I look at online, is uh, marginally better today by the just a few points from as bad as it can get to a little bit less than that. <laughs> it, 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 it's gone from Armageddon to uh, something else. Yeah, and everybody keeps telling me around here, oh, it's going to rain tomorrow, it's going to rain tomorrow. Yeah, yeah. For, you know, the official weather forecast is that it doesn't rain until Thursday, and I doubt that. It's not really the rainy season here yet. It's another two or three weeks oh, away. Oh, boy. Well, that's amazing. I, uh, uh, you know, uh, thank you so much for that smoke because actually we got it here in New York City I yesterday. I know, I saw. Yeah, I mean, it wasn't terrible, but it, you could see that we had some smoke, you know. Well, you know, last week for several days, uh, we had a level one uh, warning for three levels for evacuate. And, uh, and level one is take your time, get packed, but be ready to go. Yeah. That's what Lake Oswego was for mm-hmm. several days. And that's, you can see over there, the bags still sitting over there behind me. Yeah. When been packed. Um, we're, they took that away. We're at zero. But, um, you know, when it's all over, I'll unpack the bag. <laughs> yeah. Did, how close did the fires get to you? I don't know, Miles. I couldn't tell you. Yeah. 15, 12, something like that. Wow. Wow. You know, um, well, there isn't a real problem because our president says there isn't a problem. You know, well, the problem he thinks is that we don't sweep the forest off. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. What yeah. are you going to do? Uh, yeah, and and also when the cool weather comes, this will all go away. Yeah. Well, it doesn't matter that it will all go away. It's already happened. You yeah. know. Well, yeah, apparently, he doesn't think. You know, I, I think the worst thing in just the last couple of days from him 
is that he doesn't think he's president of all the states, only the Republican ones. And it, I mean, it, you know, there's no point in discussing him anymore. Anything that comes out of his mouth is stupid or crazy, crazy in the literal, you know, medical sense of the word. Yeah. Um, and there's just no point anymore. He, he is delusional. There's no question about it. Yeah, well, then there's 40% of the United States that seems to think that that's what a president should be. Mm -hmm. How do you think the election is going to turn out? Say again? How do you think the election is going to turn out? I do not make predictions, and I do not listen to them. Mm -hmm. The only thing that I'm worried about, and this is a definite consideration. The night of the election, he could very well be ahead. Because Republicans will go to the polls. Democrats, they say, by and large, are going to vote by mail. So you got to wait for those to come in. He's probably going to declare himself the winner on the night of the election and then try and negate everything that comes after it. I mean, we could, we could have a constitution. Prediction? We, no, we could have a constitution. Had a prediction. Yeah. Well, we could have a constitutional crisis going on. Well, that, that's not new information. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I don't, I don't know what to. to I mean, I don't understand the point. It's the day will come and we will see what happens. Mm -hmm. And last year, you know, everybody said everybody's prediction was, uh, you know, Hillary, 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 and look what we got. So. Well, we can't the, afford another four years of this kind of behavior. I'm sorry, you know. It's gonna well, be, you know, everybody's saying that too. So. You know what the problem is? I think, uh, and 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 this became very. I became very aware of this because I was watching a documentary on the history of the, China since Mao. And there was a point in the 50s where we had the opportunity of being very close and good friends with China because Mao wanted it. But we didn't, wouldn't do that because we had this whole big communist, anti-communist We thing wouldn't going. do that, did you say? Yeah, we wouldn't do it. Because, what president? Uh, uh, this was um, uh, Eisenhower. Because it was the whole anti-communist era, you know, where everybody was afraid yeah. there was a communist behind everybody. We every were growing day. up. That was yeah. big. So because they were communists, we didn't want anything to do with them. All right? That is an old philosophy. Communism, bad, don't have anything to do with it. Uh, the fact of the matter was that that was a 50s attitude. That's the same attitude Trump has today. He's living in the 50s. You know, the China today is not the China that was then. You know, when you put it that way, it seems to me that over my lifetime, I've known lots of people like that, that they stopped learning mm -hmm. at a certain young age yep. and assume that the world, through their next 40 or 50 years of life, remained static, that it didn't change. Yeah. Oh, interesting point. Yeah, I mean, it, it, I just, it just suddenly I saw the thing with Nixon when he was with you know, Eisenhower's vice president giving a speech about horrible, how horrible communism was. It's odd that years later he became the guy that brought us together. But uh, by going to China and being the first president to visit China, but at that time he was a rabid anti-communist because that's what he ran on. And uh, he said, oh, no way we're ever going to have anything to do with China because they're communists. Uh, they, they weren't the same kind of communists as the Russians. In fact, Mao hated Stalin, just hated him. Uh, but we didn't understand any of that. And we could have had an, a good ongoing relationship with them if we could just accept the fact that uh, million point, uh, 1.3 billion people decided to be communists, you know? Uh, well, I don't think the people, the individuals made that decision. Well, imposed upon them. Well, it was it it was and it wasn't. I mean, they considered what they had in China a democracy. They wanted it to be a communist democracy. Uh, and there's and that in case people think that's weird, no, it's not weird. Uh, communism is a is a uh, economic form and um, uh, a democracy is a relationship of the government to the people, you know, and the freedoms that you have. And they initially wanted all those freedoms for their people. It, it, went, it went awry as the years went on. And Mao got older and stodgier and crankier. Uh, but in the beginning, it was a very noble kind of concept. You know. So anyway, all I'm saying is that 
He's dealing in tapes that he recorded back in the 50s, okay? And that to him, China's still the same bad country it was back in the 50s, and it's not. It's purely not. Plus, you know, the, the notion that they gave us a virus, it now looks like this virus may have come here about 15 days after it first appeared in China. So, you know, how's it the China virus? All viruses come from Asia. There isn't a virus we've ever had that doesn't come from Asia. They all start there. So, anyway, so you're, you're sitting there, you're coughing. There is no global warming, according to him, but you are in the direct path of gl global warming where you're living right now. Uh, yeah. 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 I don't go outside. I haven't been outside in over a week. I have, you know, I went outside yesterday. I, I've kind of decided to not go out as much anymore. I've been going out lately because it, kind of the coast is clear. Our infection rate is down. Wait, 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 wait. wait. The smoke just arrived. No, where no, you no. Are. I'm not talking about the smoke. I'm talking about, the, I'm talking about the coronavirus. The coast is kind of... Oh, I, I don't even think about it anymore except to always put a mask on. Yeah, but remember when coronavirus was the problem? <laughs> you know, it's my it's my sense that we just bring on the four horses. We've got everything else. Yeah. Why not bring the four horses? Yeah, yeah. You know, I, and people are saying that. They're saying that this this almost is like every disaster movie ever went to. You know, where the skies go orange and uh, 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 the world is coming to an end because uh, all the global warming stuff is coming home to roost. Yeah, we, this is what's happening right now in our lives. Plus, we've got the pandemic. Plus, down in Florida, they've got the hurricanes, which mm -hmm. I hope I hope they wipe out. It wipes out Florida, but that's just my personal feeling about Florida. Uh, I have friends there. Leave it alone. Oh, okay, I'll leave it alone. I, I, I lived there for a short time, and I just came to absolutely hate Florida. <laughs> just hate it. Anyway, so how are you doing? I mean, overall, because you know you've got you've got an external problem here with the smoke. Well, it's it's really making a big difference. Really, and little I can physically do. I mean, is we we all know that you know the trajectory of my of my physical being is is downward, but in just the last week it's gotten worse. This week, finally, after everybody's been giving me a hard time about not doing it. Um, I had a cleaning service come in yesterday, and they'll come in every two weeks. And it, you know, I didn't know quite how grubby I was living. <laughs> <laughs> and it, a wonderful woman came and spent four hours and took care of everything. And it's, I mean, there are things I just didn't think. It, for the past two or three or four weeks, every time I've op opened the microwave, I thought, oh, my God, I really do have to clean this and never quite got you know the breath and the energy and then after she had gone i went to heat up something and whoa it was clean <laughs> it was nice it, it, the microwave is one of those things that really gets filthy well and the, I had, the reason is is that unless you're putting something in or taking something out you don't ever look at it right the inside anyway and i do i keep the outside wiped down all the time yeah um, <laughs> So it was, and then I, I pulled it open, and oh wow, is that clean? Um, so that was my big, big thing this week. And, and she'll be back, but all the, you know, the beginning hard cleaning uh, yeah. was done yeah. yesterday, and uh, you know, it's, and she'll change the bed. I can't. I used to say it took me to change the bed. I had to sit down and rest for several minutes three times. I can barely get that done. So she did that, and I didn't have to know anything about it. And she did a really great job. And um, and she was just terrific overall. So, you know, that was the big news this Well, week. I'll tell you something I want to tell the audience, because there's some people who don't know that I'm talking to my ex-wife, Ronnie Bennett, and that she has, uh, she had, uh, or has, do you have, still have, do they still consider you have pancreatic cancer? Or did you what have? they do is whatever other cancers you get or that it metastasized to, it's always by the medical community referred to by the first one you got. So I have pancreatic cancer. There's also cancer in a lung and a cancer in my peritoneum 
and it's been several months since I've had a scan, so who knows where else it is now, too. Yeah, yeah. But uh, um, uh, you have, uh, I don't know, when did you first get diagnosed with the pancreatic? June 2017. Yeah, so you've been going for quite a while with this thing. And More than three years. Yeah. Uh, I, I think perhaps you outlive the statistics on this? No. 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 Well, not that I don't know if I have or not, but I guess I have that, that a very low percentage of people make it beyond one year after diagnosis. Yeah. Um, and uh, But I had the Whipple surgery, this gigantic surgery where they cut you all the way down the, fro down the front and take out all kinds of parts of you. Um, and But then I have COPD, which is, you know, that's harder to live with than cancer. Mm -hmm. The most remarkable thing has done with the hospice nurse I have in terms of pain. Yeah. Before she came along a month or six weeks ago, I had been taking pain pills when I'd feel a first twinge of pain, usually in my torso somewhere. Right. And as soon as I felt a twinge, I would take a pain pill, and it takes an hour to two hours for them to kick in. She said, no, you're not going to do that anymore. You're going to take a pain pill every six hours on the clock, whether you have pain or not. And if you have pain in between, and then take this other pain pill in between. The goal is zero pain, she said. And I couldn't see how, how doing it by the clock would help. The body does what it does in its own yeah, time. Yeah, yeah. But it works. I, you know, once or twice a week, I have pain breakthrough, that's all, and a pain, and a pain pill. Takes care of it. Well, what it's, probably it, happens, what probably happens is you take the pill, <clears throat> at, let's say every six hours, let's say arbitrarily, all right? What it does is probably there's a lap over from the time that you took it. I mean, the, 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 the la, it would last longer if that was all you took. So I don't you, understand what you well, just what said. Well, you're, what you're doing is you're just simply reinforcing the pill you took before it so that you have this constant. But I used to take a pill and then four hours later I hurt again. Yeah, wow. That's interesting. It's very interesting. Yes. And how often do you take it? Every six? Yes. Yeah. So, yeah. And I don't wake up in the middle of the night to do it at midnight. Yeah. I take it through the night without... I don't have any pain when I wake up in the morning. Really? That's interesting mm -hmm. because you do go a longer time while you're sleeping. Yeah. I assume you sleep eight hours or something like that. <laughs> oh, but I only wish. I'm lucky to get three I or four. I sleep eight hours every day. If I don't get eight hours sleep, I'm just a mess. I agree. I'm working on half that much every day of my life, and that shows. Well, my wife has a sleeping problem that way, you know. And I sleep next to her, so I wake up several times a night when she gets up several times a night. But uh, so basically, where do you feel you stand on all? What, what, what point are Where, you in, what, in, 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 this, in this situation you're in? What, what, in the timeline, where are you? I don't know. You really I, don't know? Nobody has any way to know. Personally, how do you feel about where you are? I'm much, much tired than I used to be. Mm -hmm. I don't know if that will get any better when the whatever's in the air goes away, the smoke goes yeah, away. Yeah, yeah. Um, I, I would hope so because it feel I can't be sure, but it feels like it's gotten worse since this since the fires happened. Mm -hmm. um, but it's um you know I'm not going to live through this. <laughs> yeah. But nobody. Uh, I mean. Well, I mean, I, if I may this. sound like Trump, uh, I and nobody lives through this. We all eventually die. You know. Well, but that's not quite what I meant. But. Yeah. Um, you mean the smoke and and I and I couldn't with what you've got wrong with you. What we're saying here, I guess, what with what you've got wrong with you, the last thing you needed was this fire thing. Oh yeah, well yeah. it is what it is. I mean, you can't you can't go around railing against things you can't control. It just it's a yeah. waste of time. yeah. Um, I just wish it would go away, and in between, I'm doing the best I can by not going out. And using oxygen a little more, being very careful about the other stuff, moving slowly. Mm -hmm. When I first get up is the worst. It's, you know, lying down, I'm perfectly comfortable. I yeah. can breathe, breathe fine. I sit on the edge of the bed, I can breathe fine. 
I stand up. My God, I didn't know that it took so much to breathe standing yeah. up. <laughs> so yeah. I head for the oxygen, you know. Well, somebody once said, and I thought it was a good joke, so I appropriated it for my own, that, you know, I do a lot of exercise. I do uh, 50 sit-ups every morning. Well, it takes me that many tries to get out of bed. You know, mm. But, uh, but, but uh, I'll tell that. you, when I get up now, it's really strange. I have a hard time in the middle of the night when I get up to go take that midnight, that middle of the night pee that most guys do. Uh, you guys think it's you guys. All the women, women every oh, woman my, I um, has, Marjorie is up twice a night for that, more than so, I am. So, yeah, so don't, it's not guys, it's people. I, I mean, I yelled at her. I said, when when did you deserve to have a prostate problem, you know? But anyway, I uh, I get up, and I can barely walk. I mean, I have to grab on to things, and then I write myself up. But I'm so tired that uh, that I have, sometimes I have a very hard time. When I finally get up in the morning, I get up pretty easily, but... In the middle of the night, it's it's quite a quite a task to get me standing up straight. Uh, it's 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 weird. I guess it's just getting old. Damn it! You had to, you had, if you know I, I'm gonna be like Trump. If you hadn't written that column, that blog about what it's like to get old, none of us would be getting old. Shame on you! What? Every one of us that comes to. By the way, you can go to her blog, which is timegoesby.net. And um, find out what it's like to get old, and now it's it it it, it you you kind of shifted over to what it's also what it's like to deal to die, to die uh, which yes. is is part of getting old. So you you've yes. literally been covering the subject in depth. I mean, it, it's um, it was just what it's really like to get old, and I've told that story about how I came to that. Mm -hmm. I had to think long and hard about when I was first diagnosed with pancreatic cancer, whether I would write about it or not. And I came to the conclusion of just what you said, mm -hmm. that up until then, I had been, in terms of health, I had been lucky for 76 years. Yeah. The worst thing that ever happened to me was a cold now and then or the flu. Mm -hmm. and, <clears throat> and that many people have one or more, I think it's something that after age 65, I could be off, but I'm close. After 65, some huge percentage, like 75 or 80% of people have at least one or two chronic diseases. Right. And if cancer isn't killing you, it's a chronic disease. Some people live with COPD for years and years and years. Mine became evident much later in its development and there's no treatment. You can only, you know, keep it under control, that's about it. Yeah. And, um, so I didn't know anything about that particularly until it happened to me. And then I realized that it kind of fit right in with what I was writing about because up until that happened to me, I was the anomaly. Most people my age had one or two or more diseases. Right, but when you got one. <laughs> I didn't mess around. You hit, you hit it right out of the park, kiddo. <laughs> Well, you know, I mean, I, I never griped to you about my particular aches and pains because compared to what you're going through, it's just, I'm just, it, 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 I have annoyances, okay? <laughs> you know, I mean, I have neuropathy. That's an annoyance, you know. I have that too. Yeah. Would, you, would you like my whole list? Yeah, I have allergy problems. That's an annoyance. Uh, uh, I had the cancer. I had the prostate cancer, but it seems to be remissed, as it were. Uh, and we're, you know, we're, we're, what is that going on? Is that her phone going off? Son of a bitch. Uh, I've got to have her turn that down next time. Anyway. Um, I don't hear a thing. I know you don't hear a thing. It was all over in the corner. Um, uh, I just, uh, you know, I mean, I, uh, pretty much my cancer, you know, the PSA tests and stuff show that they got it, at least for now, you know. Um, so I'm, you know, I mean, I, I consider myself fortunate because even when I got cancer, it was the most, one of the most curable of the cancers. So, you know, uh, so I never gripe about it when I'm on with you because that would be insulting to you. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Of course you can. Come on. Come on. You're pathetic. I, I <laughs> 
Oh, man, oh, man. Jeez. Uh, it is not fun getting older. Well, we're running out of time. No, I can't. I say that every week, and I shouldn't say that. We're what? running out of our allotted time on the program. You can say we're running out of time. I'm running out of time. You're running out of time, and I'm running out of time, and we're all running Everybody's out of time. running out of time. And, and what, let's say we, we get together and do this again in a couple of weeks, okay? Let's do that. Ladies all right. and gentlemen, that, be a that's Ronnie Bennett. Timegoesby.net is her blog. Read it. Go back and read all the old <laughs> stuff because it's ageless you know it's 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 uh what they call oh, the big you. evergreen thank it's evergreen thank you ronnie thank you talk to you soon now in our sixth year this is gabnet the great american broadcast network talk like you've never heard it before and that's ronnie and uh, we love talking to ronnie and we will talk to her in two weeks from right now God willing, and the creeks don't rise, as they say in the old days. Anyway, oh, man. How are you this evening? You ready to go with another uh, session of this thing that we do? Uh, a lot of people are watching tonight. Well, it, it, that's, that's good. You know, I, sometimes I wonder, should I keep doing this? Uh, do people care? Uh, and uh, it's, yeah, it's, uh, apparently they do. Anyway, let's start going to some of our, uh, admitting some of our people to our Zoom panel. Uh, we have Charlie Wallace, and we have Fred Sox. Uh, let's see here. There's Fred. Okay, wait a minute. Hold on a second. I got to do this. Okay, there we go. Are we, are we okay? Are we, do we have this right? Okay, we, wait a minute. Wait a minute. There's something wrong. Oh, I see what it is. Okay, we're fine. Okay, I'm just trying to make sure that I've got the right uh, thing going here and everything. Hello, Charlie. Hello, Fred. Hello, Alex. Fred, I forget where your where your residence is. Where are you located? North Carolina. North Carolina. So, well, let's see. Do you have any major problems there in that part of the world? I mean, outside of the fact that it's North Carolina. Yeah, we're uh, you know we're on the uptick in the uh, COVID. Yeah. Oh, really? You're in the uptick? Yeah, we're still in the uptick. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. Does, yeah. Doesn't get any better, does it? No. 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 Um, yeah, we, uh, we had one day where we went to, uh, let's see, uh, our, our governor says that you want to stay un uh, under 1%, and we hit 1% day before yesterday, but then yesterday... We hit uh, one point, eight, excuse me, a point eight seven, I think, or something like that. So we're we're still wet under a, a one, and um, that's yeah, we should have your governor be president. Uh, believe me, I I am hoping that someday he does become president because uh, he has certainly comported himself correctly in this situation, and it was not a it was not an easy situation for anybody. I mean. I would even, if, if he weren't so in a state of denial, I would feel sorry for Donald Trump having to be president during this crisis. I would uh, feel sorry for anybody. But I don't feel sorry for him because he won't admit there's a problem. And that caused yeah. a lot more deaths than we should have had. You know? Yeah, his, his leadership is just in the toilet, so to speak. Wait, wait you know? a minute, leadership? <laughs> <laughs> his lack of leadership is in the toilet <laughs> you know leadership i would argue i would argue that his his leadership is right where he wants it and that's just to his core he, yeah he's not governing for nobody else except for his fucking core well or himself you know, or himself you know. right hey we know we've been joined by gee we haven't seen in this face in a long time uh it must be because uh we're free of some other person. Uh, Scott Boddicker. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I've been in timeout since my last visit. Why? You don't. I'm glad you don't remember. I'm not even going to say. Did you put yourself in timeout? Yes, yes. Oh, yes. self-imposed timeout. Was it because of a interaction with somebody else? No, no, oh. no, no. Don't you remember? Well, maybe you don't remember. No, maybe I, I shouldn't say. I don't remember. Last time I called in, I was I was a little um, uh, inebriated. Well, that's, oh, that's what we. Right. But that's what we like about you. <laughs> <laughs> that's great on Jack's show. 
<laughs> yeah, you don't care if you go on somebody else's show drunk. No, 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 no. But that's Jack, and you're like you're like the all star. Jack's like oh second string. Oh, no, I've been stop it. Stop it. Does Jack listen? I, I well, he doesn't listen now. I'll tell you that. <laughs> uh, I'm just teasing you, Jack. You know I love you. Yeah, but I mean, uh, uh, you know, I mean, you. I've never noticed. You know, you, you might be drunk and you might know it, but I don't notice it, you know? Wow. Okay. That was, that was, yeah. Yeah. But if you I was are, embarrassed, I was, I was really embarrassed by my performance. Do you so. feel you drink too much? No, no, I don't. I do oh. not. Oh, it's okay. more of a, it's more of a Jackie Gleason, Dean Martin kind of thing. It's a prop. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's a prop. It's a prop. Yeah, yeah. Except sometimes it goes a little over the top. See, I don't drink. And I'll tell you why I don't drink. It's not because everybody thinks I'm like some kind of teetotaler because, well, I'm against alcohol. Now, I, I, I don't think alcohol is great for you, but uh, I just um, I don't like the taste of the stuff. I know that sounds strange, doesn't yeah. it? Yeah. Especially well, to somebody who drinks. Yeah. Do you drink, Charlie? I never asked you that. Oh, yeah. Oh. Yeah, I, 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 I drink. Oh, you well, the only drink I didn't like was beer until I got to Texas and the 100 degree weather convinced me to yeah. beer. You know okay. something? You're right about that. I never liked beer particularly, but on a really hot day, somebody handed me a beer and God did it taste good. <laughs> you know? <laughs> but doesn't yeah. beer, because it's alcohol, dehydrate, excuse me, dehydrate you more than you yeah. already are? Yes. So yes. it's kind so of count can't... it's kind of counterproductive. You just have to drink more beer. Yeah. <laughs> I guess that's the answer. I I didn't I did not know that. What is your drink of choice, Scott? Uh, uh you talking liquor or the liquor, yeah. I'm probably right now it's bourbon. Bourbon. Oh bourbon. good. Yeah. yeah. Um bourbon has the cheaper a, the better. Well, but you, oh, really? In other words, you want the rot gut stuff. Yeah, yeah right. Right. Do you do do you, uh, do you drink at all, uh, Richard? Robert, rather? No. Um, I, I used to be a Jack Daniels guy, but about 30 years ago, my digestive system just didn't handle it. So I haven't had a drink in quite some time. And you're right. If I go to parties and sit there with a soda, people automatically assume that, yeah. you know, I, I, I was out of control at some point, which was never the case. Everybody assumes that if you don't drink, you're an, al you are, you're an alcoholic yeah. and you're, Re you know, you're not drinking. And, and I always had a problem that way, you mm -hmm. know, because I'm, I, I didn't drink because I just don't like the taste of the stuff. But it's funny when somebody would say, ah, come on, have a drink. What will you have? My drink of preference was not vodka, which is supposed to be the easiest thing to drink. You know, you can swill that stuff down by the gallon. Yeah. But mine was scotch. Mm. I, know. I, I used to be scotch, but bourbon's, you know, it's, it's whiskey. It's all just different type of whiskey. Yeah. It really? I see. I don't, I don't even know that. Scotch is a okay. whiskey. Bourbon's a whiskey. Yeah. yeah. You know. Canadian whiskey, you know, there's all kinds of whiskeys. Yeah. But just a, just a, I don't know what you call it. Yeah. A gender. Yeah. So anyway, that uh, that's it. Uh, glad to have you back, Scott. Well, it, it the show is a lot more pleasant to listen to on the podcast. I listen to you all the time, but I just, yeah. I just, yeah. It the has, Zoom, I'm still getting used to the Zoom. It has, yeah. it, it has been pleasant. Yes. Yes. The Zoom is much easier to use, Scott. You know? Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It just, yeah. it just. I mean, I had people that were flummoxed by Skype. I mean, I don't think Jeff quite ever learned Skype. You know, <laughs> uh, he just tolerated it. Uh, but uh, this is, uh, you know, this is just a no brainer. Even for me, I just sit here and uh, all I have to do is admit people when they go into the waiting room. And, and it is a lot smoother in the opening when it used to be like, for 15 minutes, putting people in places and whatnot. I used to say, okay, now I'll put him in this place and that place yeah. and so on. Yeah. yeah uh, it, was, it was real rough at first yeah, for you. Yeah, but yeah, it is much smoother. Yeah. I mean, the only thing I don't like about it is that I don't have as much control over the way it looks. 
that I had with the Skype thing because I was putting everything in its own place and where people should oh. go. But when I got oh, up to 10 or more people, it started going sour. It started getting glitchy and noisy and uh, people were out of sync. And some people were popping in and out. Uh, with this, I, I, I've done 16 people, I think, here. It was has been my top, my max so far. And my system wasn't even breathing heavy, you know? So, yeah. Even my, even my computer, you know, I, I, I'm going to test it because I think with Zoom, it's not going to run as hard. But no. in Skype, which is just a few people on Skype, my computer, it's getting older, and it just gets so hot, and it's yeah. wearing down. Yeah. The more people I added to Skype, I can see here my CPU usage, my central processing unit usage. And here on this, I can put 20 people on here, and it doesn't budge from about 16%. It just, you know, it, it, uh, Zoom does all the heavy lifting. And also, if anybody wants to call right now, you just go over to either my Facebook page or go to gabnet.net, and over on the right-hand side of the page, says click here for Zoom. You don't even have to have Zoom in your computer. It'll ask if you'd like to install it, but you don't have to, and it'll just put you right through just by clicking it. So, I mean, it's really, it's very democratic, too, is what I like about it. Uh, Zoom, can, Zoom can do up to 100, 100 or 200 people. I, I pay for a service where I can get up to 100. Yeah. Uh, I would hate to have to deal with a citizen panel yeah. of 100-plus they wouldn't all be in the same panel. I would have to go back and forth between the pages. pages so I prefer to just stick it at 20 where, mm -hmm. you know, but we've never gotten that high. And one night I should probably beg people to like, just call so we can see how many people we can put on at the same time, uh, except for one person, uh, you know. No. That's why well, it's just one person you keep mentioning. Oh, I don't know. I have no <laughs> idea. Uh, we don't even want to. Talk it's Doug about. from North Carolina. It's Doug from North Carolina, right? Whatever happened to Doug? Is he still alive? <laughs> yeah, he's I, he's a Facebook friend of mine. Oh, is he a Facebook friend of yours? Yep. Really? What's he doing? Is he? He's not married anymore, right? Oh, I hadn't heard that. He hadn't posted that. I think I got the idea. He and his wife broke up, but I may be wrong. If I were his wife, I'd break up with him. But, you know. His wife's a real sweetheart. Hmm? What? His wife's a real sweetheart. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Um, he's not a bad guy either. It's just that he sometimes would call up. You want to talk about somebody who would call up drunk and just hijack the show. Yeah. You know, there was no controlling him. And I just couldn't, I couldn't take it anymore. I mean, it, it, you know, I don't want to. Let me put it this way. I did this because I'm no longer working. And I don't want to work too hard when I do, okay? I want to just have a nice time. And so when you got somebody like Doug, it's like driving a car and having a drunk in the, uh, in the driver's seat tugging on the steering wheel all the time, you know? And uh, that was, very, it was pretty rough for me, you know? So, I mean, I, he, he's the only person that's ever been, only person that's ever been banned from the show. Uh, there's one other person that I don't, I don't, I didn't ban them from the show, but I just don't, I, you know, they go to the waiting room and they just keep sitting there. And it's only because every time they come on, they've always got some technical problem yeah. that they can't seem to solve. You know who I'm talking about? Yep. A guy from another country. Not Bree. Bree's coming on right now. But he always has problems, you know, and it's glitchy. And it's, then so you're taking up 15, 20 minutes trying to solve his transmission problem, and you don't want to do that. So, you know, so that's the way the show works, folks. Uh, you know, it's just, great. Just and make, you are relevant, it, and we all love it. We all love your show. Well, thank you, all seven of you. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> anyway, hello, Bree. How are you today? Hello. Yeah. Good, good. No, no cat. Um, uh, yeah. What? No wild animals in the attic? No, no wild animals in the attic. Okay. Um, What'd you do with that cat? Just... Wildlife people came and got him. Yeah. Oh, cool. Yeah. Looks like yeah. he's so... performing digital rectal exams. <laughs> <laughs> no. Oh, really? I use, I use gloves anytime I do any work, like at all, moving things, 
you know, anything. Because I always cut myself, even with paper. I, I know why you have those gloves on. You, why? You started experimenting with the coffee idea, didn't you? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I suppose this would have worked. Yeah. I could have had the space for that. I have a, I have a, this house has so much room. Uh, and this particular space is, is like a storage room. So yeah. I'm trying to organize it so I can actually do, uh, you know, do a lot of work in here. Yeah. Like it'll be kind of a storage room slash work room. Right. Right. Uh, but, uh, my boss was recently experimenting with OBS, uh, for doing his online presentation stuff. So well, I don't well, know. Well, that's what I use here for the show. Yeah. <clears throat> so does it work with one camera or do you have to have another camera or something? No, you can do it with one camera. That, uh, basically, I only do it with one camera. I do have a separate, a couple other cameras hooked into it, but I, I never use them. Usually, I use. What do you the, mean plugged into it? Uh, oh, it's plugged in into the into the uh, into the computer. Uh, oh, I see. Y yeah, plugged into the computer. So, oh, there, there's Scott. Uh, there's Scott. There's <laughs> there's you, you, you asshole. <laughs> There's, hmm? I a separate a couple other cameras hooked into it, but I, I never use them. Usually, I use them. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Where, where did that sound come from? Uh, anyway, uh, Mr. Stopper, hello there. How are you? Doing okay? How are you? Yeah. Uh, Good. Uh, so anyway, um, uh, where where are we? Um, so anyway, so it, you know, it, it, yeah, that's what happens with I, I, you know, I do have second cameras I can use. Like for instance, uh, oh, here's my camera, okay, and then I've got a camera over where Marjorie usually sits, and that's called the B camera, and I can I can go over there if I want to, but that's kind of a waste of time. So we go back to our Zoom panel, and uh, there we are. See, that's that's how OBS works. OBS means uh, something broadcast system, <laughs> open open source broadcast system. So, which means everybody can kind of add to it and modify it and improve on it and so on. Well, anyway, so the fire's still going on out in California, although it's supposed to start raining. Um, and I think I understand you guys out there. Uh, where where's where is uh, um, Hmm. Kevin isn't. Uh, Brian. Brian isn't here. Tonight. How is your storage container? What? You you have a storage container in California. Last time it almost burned up. No, it didn't burn. Come close to burning down this time. No, it, it's okay. But anyway, um, um, yeah. Where's Brian tonight? It's strange. Brian usually always calls. Maybe he will call later. Uh, uh, but I wanted to ask, but I can ask Kevin, and I can ask anybody else in, out in California. Yeah, well, we got uh, we got John Larkin out in California. Uh, uh, I, I understand that things are a little better since you started raking the uh, leaves. <laughs> I did my raking today. Yeah, yeah, you did your raking. Uh, what, what's interesting is our. <clears throat> it, I hate to call him president because it, it, I don't feel like we have one. Okay. Uh, today, uh, or was it yesterday, that he, he said that, uh, what was it that we had, <laughs> he was talking, he meant to say herd, uh, herd mentality. He, well, herd mentality. He called it herd mentality. Yeah. <laughs> and I, I stopped to think that that was the first time he's really ever been right about anything because the people who are his fans have yes. a herd mentality. herd mentality. Yes. But he uh, meant uh, herd immunity. Immunity. Right. Yeah, uh, but, but Alex, if we want to talk about if we want to talk about uh, gaps, Biden had a slew of them. Oh, really? Over the weekend and this week. Oh my gosh. He said uh, under the Harris uh, Harris Biden administration, it's really going to be taken. Everything's going to be taken care of. So he put uh, Kamala first. In case you missed that, she's now top of the ticket. Yeah. Well, and, no, I think uh, no. I think that was that isn't a gaffe. That's being nice, you know. You're. How you're... about playing Despacito on his phone? What? And he played that. He 
he was giving a talk in front of the Hispanic community. He wanted to win them over. Mm -hmm. So he took, he's at the beginning of his speech. He says, wait, everybody, he takes out his mobile phone and he starts to play Despacito, which means slowly. And yeah, so the Trump campaign had a field day with Slow Joe. Mm -hmm. So, I mean. Well, you know, here's the thing. Uh, I don't mind gaffes. I pr vastly prefer them to complete inadequacy, you know, and complete yeah. uh, 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 avoidance of the problems. Uh, you know, I expect when I have Joe Biden as president, he's going to make gaffes, okay? But you laugh at the gaffes. You don't laugh at 200,000 people dead because some guy wouldn't admit there was a problem, you know? So uh, I'll, take, I'll take Biden gaffes over, and, you know. I mean, wouldn't you, Bree, be honest I'll, about it? I'll, yeah, he was, yeah, I, I guess you're right. But I mean, but if, if you're going to talk about, you know, slips of the tongue, mm -hmm. then you have to include Biden. Well, well what about Bar I, slip of the tongue a little while ago? Did you hear Bar slip? Yeah. Who? Bar says, uh, Bar said that the lockdown compared to slavery. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, that's really? Not no, really? That's not a slip of the tongue. That's what he believes. Yeah. 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 And did you yeah, hear the other, I mean, did did you hear the the other thing that Barr was saying to people at the Justice Department, that these people should um, uh, be arrested for insurrection? Sedition. People who are, uh, sedition, yeah. because, yeah. They're, because yeah. it's an insurrection, what they're doing. Yeah, no, we had a, uh, it's called freedom of speech, but I, I don't think Barr heard of that because he didn't go to law school that long. Yeah, we <laughs> had a uh, talk show host in Pittsburgh who got who got uh, let go for a bit. She she said shoot on sight. They should be shot on sight. Wow. Yeah, yeah. Well, you, you know, know what wow. Trump, Trump said today that if you took out all the blue states, we wouldn't have that many deaths. You know, from you know the COVID. No, really. Is, it's all yeah, our Yeah, that's what he said. If it wasn't for the blue states. It's all but our But then when you stop and think of it, that's where everybody lives in the blue states. Well, you take out California, New York, fucking, you know, that's right he, there. He, here's the thing. He says that all those forest lands should be raked, okay, <laughs> and, and cleaned up, and then there wouldn't be fires like that. And mm. the fact is that I think 60% of the fires are on federal land. Federal land, yeah. 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 So why isn't his federal land management people uh, it's, it's, raking it's, the leaves? Federal it's, land is like 57, 58%. 57% federal yeah. to 3% state 3%. California. To 3% state? Yep. Then what's the rest yeah, but of it? Don't, when the facts have gotten in the way of Trump. Huh? 50, what, what? Is it, is it going to talk or me? No. Go ahead, Kevin. 57% in federal and 3% in state. And then what's the rest? Private? Yeah. 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 Okay. So Company. why isn't he doing something about it? You know. That's what that's what Newsom said to him. Yeah. <laughs> and he kind of shrugged his head and turned to the forest retreat people and told them they had their heads up their ass. With the, he wasn't going to. Yeah. He wasn't going to admit to his uh, his mistake. Yeah. Yeah. He said the yeah. science that you know. Yeah. Well, it's going to get dark tonight, so. Yeah. yeah, yeah, it's gonna, and it's gonna, it's gonna. This is all. He said, eventually, this is all gonna go away. Oh yeah. 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 Oh. yeah absolutely. You know. So all those hurricanes, they're gonna disappear too. Yeah. Did you know water is wet too? No. <laughs> really wet. I think you know he, once he said really wet. Yeah, it's yeah. gonna get really, really wet. Yeah. <laughs> and he they pulled out the mark. Bring in some rhinoceroses. Yeah. Well, uh, in fact, God, unfortunately, that's oh, one thing oh, that oh. didn't plague Stormy Daniels when she was with him, was getting yeah. wet. Yeah. Uh, thank you. I'll be here all week. I don't know. Enjoy the veal. Don't forget to tip the waiter. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah no, I, uh, you know, um, uh, some, there's so much. It's the anti-science, I think, that bothers me, you know? I mean, Science is a, it's very important to believe in science because science isn't, isn't a myth, you know. Science is real whether you believe it or not. Well, I'll tell you what the problem is. I mentioned this last night, and I thought about it more today, and the more I thought about it, the more right I think I am. And even Ronnie agreed with me on this. The problem with Trump is he has a 50s mentality about everything. 
For instance, his attitude about the Chinese is a 50s attitude. Oh, those commies, we can't have anything to do with those commies. They're out to get us. They want to go to war against us. He's living in that mentality when the China that exists today is an entirely different animal. Uh, and while it has a whole raft of problems, it, it doesn't have the same problems it had in the 50s, and he's still living in the 50s. No, I, I, I don't think he is, Alex. I think he just uses that when it, when it behooves him. He has a granddaughter who speaks Mandarin. So, you know, and, uh, and he, I'm sure he's tried to do dealings with them, and he probably just wasn't successful. That's probably why he was telling his daughter and his grand teacher of Mandarin so she can help me get into the Chinese market. He just doesn't have as much there. He can't sort of, you know, canoodle his way. There's the corruption level is lower than in Russia, for example, where he can get money from banks mm -hmm. and do, you know, and have relationships yeah. because Ro that's the kind of world he knows. Robert, I agree he, with, go ahead, Bree, finish. Yeah, if, he, if he's still in the 1980s, he would never talk to Russia, right? Right. Yeah, yeah okay, yeah. Uh, Robert. I agree with what Bree's saying, and I'd like to take it a step further. Stop and think about the important states in the country as far as the Electoral College are concerned, and their states that suffered from the lack of manufacturing, that mm -hmm. manufacturing and industrialization is on the wane and we're becoming less an industrialized country and more a service economy country and an information economy. And so I think the appeal was to go to those Rust Belt states and have a foil and say it's because of them that you've lost your job when the actual fact is they were going to lose their jobs anyway because we're less an industrialized economy exactly like it used to be yeah so china for him i think is just a foil that he can point to and the guy that lost his coal mining job buys into the fact that oh yeah now i know who i should blame in the meantime it, it was simply the economy has turned on those people. Historically, when the agrarian America turned into the industrial America, there was this same kind of upheaval where farmers were now without skills, without ability to, you know, to, to provide for themselves. Mm -hmm. So I think he uses China as, as his, he loves to have a foil. Well, I mean, the thing is, a good, another good example of him having a 50s mentality is when he did this whole thing about, we have to bring back coal. These yeah. coal miners are being hurt. <laughs> well, I, I'm sorry, but coal isn't the energy source we use any longer. No. You know? And uh, plus, I wouldn't, who here would love to be a coal miner and get black lung disease? And, uh, you know, I have to go down into those those ghastly situations which are run by some of the most egregious employers in the country yes. you know and what I'm going to get you back down in the mine yeah what you know teach him something else you know teach him how to run a computer or something get him yeah. out of that coal mine am I he, Scott you went right you kind of agreed with that right well well they don't do that much underground mining anymore. It's more of a strip mining, Frank. Frank. chop the mountaintop off and, and destroy the environment. It's, it's horrible what they're yeah. doing, mountaintop removal. Oh, and some of the fracking is terrible, too. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, Fracking's a fucking nightmare. Yeah. Yeah. Whole areas are... Cl what are you doing there, Bree? <laughs> Every time we go there, he's doing something. <laughs> I mean, well, you, 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 know, you don't Alex, say, you know, I think I'll, I think I'll paint this room before the Bennett show goes on and then I'll call the Bennett show. But no, you go, I'll wait for the Bennett show to start painting. I'm not painting. I'm just organized. Oh, I see. I've gotta, I have to stay active during the day. I mean, you know, I, I, I just feel bad when I'm always sitting. I, if I sit for like, you know, and I have to for my job a lot. If I sit like 20 minutes or so. At like 25 minutes, I just start feeling like I'm going to die. You know, like I've got to get up and move. Yeah. You know? What time is it there? It's a, probably about the same time it is here, but 12 hours difference, right? It's probably 11.29 yeah. there, right? That's right. And i got to think about ordering lunch here, probably from Food Panda. Now, here's an interesting little factoid that most people don't know. Uh, how many uh, time zones are there in China? 
like seven or nine. One. One. Oh, oh, oh. Yeah, China. Yeah, China yeah. decided. Mainland China. Mainland yeah. China decided they would have the same time zone throughout in all of China, even though they would normally span, as you say, something like six or seven time yeah. zones. Um, which is, uh, uh, like for instance here in the United States, we have you know, a, a number of time zones, so that when it's like nine o'clock yeah. in New York, it's 1957 in, in Florida. So, <laughs> you know, it's a joke, folks. Anyway. Uh, Mr. Sox, what do you think about what's going on these days? Isn't it just frustrating as hell? Well, I'm still trying to get over the fact that 40 something percent of people in the United States support this guy. Yes. How does that possibly be? How can that? No. It's just mind-boggling. Yeah. Well, how, you know, how stupid do you have to be? Although I do know some intelligent people, believe it or not, who are, are Trump folks. And I, so do I. I, I can't, yeah, and I can't even see why, because even some of my biggest uh, uh, Republican friends, conservative friends, don't like Trump. Because he's ruining the brand. But you know, but Alex, hmm? I, I, I have my that. days when I like Trump. Good for you. Uh, so you're you're the one. Okay. I, I could explain it. Well, let let somebody else talk here, Mr. Sox. Right. How do you feel about that? Well, so you know, if if we have intelligent uh, Republican people, mm -hmm. well, uh, no, I don't think I, you know I'm, that we support. Uh, I, Trump? Don't, I don't think Republicans are necessarily stupid, and I don't like to write them off as stupid. because I, I don't do, either. I do uh, think you have to have a loyal, no. decent opposition, all right? Uh, and I like people who disagree with me because I'm not, uh, not the, you know, I, I'm not the last word on everything. Uh, but there are... It, yeah, but dis disagreeing with you... There's a difference between conservative and, and trumpet, being a trumpet. Yeah. Exactly. Uh, uh, you know, another thing is, 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 you know, it's not just Trump either. You, 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 you know, let's look at the Senate. Let's look at the Congress. Well, let's for, for a moment no, forget the about Senate, it. Yeah. You, you, they completely vote whatever, you, you know. Listen, the, 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 minute, the minute Trump is no longer president, the Republicans in the Senate, if there are a majority of them, or even if there aren't a majority of them, are going to suddenly de start denying his existence. Okay, they're just they're just in, still going to going to vote party line every time. They're in there for the short game. Yeah, but the party line might change if the leadership of that party changes because Trump is out. The leadership in that party right now is there because that's who Trump wants in there. Well, I'm not. I'm. I'm also trying to say at the same time that uh, Democrats also have the same kind of problems. They have both party line pretty much. You know, it's funny. You look at the Republican candidates. So now you you have a government that's stuck in in, in neutral. You yeah. know, you but, can't get anything done. But you look at the Republican candidates over the last couple of years, uh, Romney and McCain, and you go, "Wow, we would sure be better off with those guys, yes. wouldn't we?" Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. I, I look at Colin Powell at times and think to myself, he's a Republican, but if he were president, I would sleep nights. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I, but, I mean, uh, Romney, um, I, I didn't like him. You know, I, didn't, I wasn't politically for him. He doesn't, he's not my political camp. But I would feel a lot safer at night if he were president of the United States because I would know, number one, he... He, he wouldn't have his belly going out over his belt buckle. And secondly, um, he would have a respect for the job. Yes. And, of course, McCain definitely would have respect for the job. Yep. Uh, and and um, uh, the only thing that made me sad about McCain was I think that he was a fairly decent person, Okay. Uh, yes. And I, I, at one point in my life, I said the only Republican I could vote for would be John McCain. Then John mm -hmm. McCain ran, and because he felt he somehow had to compromise himself yeah. with his vice presidential choice, that was insane. Okay. He, res he resented that, man. That was a mistake. Uh, that probably cost him the election. Yeah, yeah. for sure. You know? I Maybe mean, Trump should replace uh, Pence with Sarah Palin. 
That would make a great picture, wouldn't it? Yeah, that'd be great. That'd be great. You know. Um, you could go I, to her house and see Russia from there. How many yeah. of you here felt he was going to get rid of Pence when he ran for a second term? I, I, I thought so, yeah. But no, he won't. he's keeping Pence there. I think what he is, he's, he's much of a yes man. well, he's assassination insurance. <laughs> you know, uh, because uh, nobody would want to shoot Trump because then we get Pence. All right. Got to yeah. take them both. Out. Think Pence is worse. Okay. Uh, well, I think. Uh, I think. I think. Pence is worse. No, he's. Okay. He's, I got the evidence. He's. You know what he believes. You know, and that's the thing that you don't know about Trump. Trump's just all over the place. Yeah. Well, I, he can take what he believes and shove it up his ass. I know. I know. I know. <laughs> you know. Alex. So I found out China officially does have one time zone, but unofficially they have others. How does that work? Yeah. I don't know. In Xinjiang. Hey, what time is it? Well, do you want the real time or the rumor? Yes. Yes. In Xinjiang, they have a separate time that's four hours different from Beijing. But because Beijing tells them they have to use official time, they report that and then their own. So officially, they've got one time zone. But unofficially, it's kind of like Mandarin is the official Chinese. Well, I don't, I don't, speak. listen, I don't see that as a bad thing, making your whole country be the same time zone. Just, just to end any kind of confusion. The only thing is, yeah. is that you know, if we did it here in the United States, uh, when it's ten o'clock at night here, the sun will still be up in California, you know. <laughs> uh, and if you said that that's ten o'clock at night, how do you go to sleep? You know, so it's a real problem. So that uh, I, I, I don't know exactly how that works in China, but all I know is that every time my wife goes to China, I know exactly what time it is over there because I look at my clock and then I add twelve hours. Yeah. 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 Um, I know I uh, I feel that Pence uh, he's a, he has a lot of religious dogma going there, and I don't like that as uh, as a as a person being political in this country. I think if, even if you're religious, and Jimmy Carter, for instance, very religious guy, yeah. but he didn't impose that upon the presidency and upon the the, the population. He it, it, I'll tell you, Rosalind Carter once was asked by a a, uh, a Christian reporter, uh, have you been born again? And her answer was, no, because I got it right the first time. First time. <laughs> you know, uh, I mean, there was no more religious person than the Carters, and yet they never imposed that upon the public. Uh, well, how about when they asked, when they asked Jimmy Carter, yeah. you know, have you ever thought about other women and that kind of stuff? And he said, well, I've lusted in my heart. Right. Right. Which, was an, theme of my which was an honest answer. Which was an honest answer. You have been answer. with us long enough, Fred, to know that that's one of my common sayings at lunchtime here. <laughs> ah. mm -hmm. Yes. Um, but uh, um, I don't know. You know, I mean, it, 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 we're getting close to the election. And um, it, 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 if, you, if you look at Nate Silver, who I think is probably the best person to read on the subject... He's usually always been right. I read Who? him today, Nate Silver. Oh, thank you. Uh, 538. or something? Yeah, what, what's the name of the... 538. 538. 538, yeah. uh, he, um, he says uh, it looks pretty good for, for Biden, you know. Uh, the only weak spot that they From found... Here, it looks all Trump. Can, can I say something, Bree, please? Uh, 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 what uh, Nate Silver said was that the only problem that he might have, people are saying, is Florida. Uh, and there's some question as to whether they're getting good reports from Florida, because the, the Hispanics down there don't seem to be for Biden. Uh, and the reason is, is because they're Cubans, who are very right wing. Mm -hmm. What were you going to say, Jeff? Huh? Jeff, turn on your you, mic. That's, that's where Bloomberg is spending all his money. Yeah. I'm going to say, again, the Cubans are, are Republicans, I believe. Yeah, yeah. They're, they're very, very staunch Republicans. Yeah. Now, uh, why? Well, well, yeah. well, I can tell you why, because I worked in a Cuban uh, district. They still have resentment, believe it or not, about the Bay of Pigs. Kennedy. Well, it wasn't like we didn't try. I understand that, but that isn't how they see it. Yeah. They, they see haven't it forgotten. Well, here's the thing. Here's the thing. I've always disliked intensely 
the Miami Cubans, and I'll tell you why. Because the vast majority of them came from Cuba as very privileged people. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. They were the ones who kept Batista in power That's and right. were, in fact, uh, uh, rich and wealthy because of Batista. And the minute Castro came in and turned everything over to the people, they all left. They yeah. all left because yeah. they were going to get, they were going to have nothing. And so they hated Castro for that. And it was all, all because they were, they were right, they were in that category of hating uh, uh, Castro because of, uh, it wasn't in their best interest to be for Castro. You know. And they just constantly, you know, remember that whole uh, Elian Gonzalez? You remember that whole thing? Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. man, they were kidnapping this kid and handing him over to other people. And the kid's going, I want to go home to daddy. You know, you can't go home to daddy. We're not going to let. That was all those, those Cubans down in Miami. Yeah. And those same Cubans, by the way, gave you Scarface. So, you know, I yeah. mean, come on. You know, they were some of the biggest drug dealers on the planet. MSNBC just put up a poll that's got Lindsey Graham in a dead heat. Really? Yeah. Really? Susan, Susan Collins going to lose. She's down by 12. Yeah, yeah she's, she's down, down big, big time. time. Yeah. yeah. So they, we might lose that seat. We might lose the other seat. So the, the, slowly, the if, if you know, Even I always... Take the Senate. I, in the past, I've always said I kind of like an even keel on, on power that, you know, we have uh, people who are we have Democrats, we have Republicans, maybe we have a, a Republican Senate, and we have a Democratic Congress, and we have a whatever president, and all that kind of balance itself out and lets the dialogue flow. But that dialogue has stopped. So yeah. that now I pray that everybody who controls Congress and the Senate and the White House are all Democrats. I haven't wanted that in the past. I mean, you look like you agree with me, Robert. I mean, you, yes, you I do. In a good. No longer. In a healthy democracy like this, you'd have that, that, you know, and then all these ideas come together in this one place, and a better idea comes out, hopefully. Yep. You know, that those days are gone. So I just hope we wipe their asses with the, uh, on the floor, you know, with a mop. Um, Ray, I may have just made up a new saying. I don't know what that was, <laughs> wiping their asses with a mop. Um, uh, and Brian, how are you feeling about it these days? So you, you you think we're in a positive place? Uh, and I think I'm like you guys, getting tired of just back and forth. You know, like even when he came and came and visited California and stuff, I wasn't interested in what he was going to say because you know he's going to say something stupid. And and his people are in it to the end. People I have on Facebook and friends of mine who are for him, it doesn't matter what he does. Mm -hmm. He does yeah. something more stupid, more stupid. And they're not even like contemplating what he did. It's it's that reversal and it's you know ten times harder of this is why he did it because this is why, you know, and Lindsay Lindsay can do anything he and they're not gonna change their vote. Lindsey Graham, knowing he's on the cusp, okay, of of being out the door, has suddenly come out by going, Well, sometimes Trump does stuff I don't like. <laughs> yeah. Oh, really? That's this week. Up until, yeah. up until recently, when things didn't look bad for you, you yeah. didn't seem to really care, and yeah. you defended him. As you know, and all these re Republican senators are enablers. Yeah. You know, he's like, like Trump is an mm -hmm. alcoholic, and they're feeding him the liquor. So <laughs> what Susan's calling is going to be, is she going to be, I'm going to be more concerned now. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, yeah. Oh, I've been. I'm very concerned. Now I'm more concerned. <laughs> yeah. Well. Where are all the deficit hawks? Where are all the Republicans in favor of family values? Where mm -hmm. are all the Republicans in favor of a strong military and limited government? Mm -hmm. I don't hear those people anymore. It only just, happens when the when the Democrats are in power. Yeah, exactly. Yep. I don't hear those people anymore. Their foundation is no longer their foundation. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. So I don't, you know, I I don't understand that that uh, that uh, way in which they seem to Alert ignore updates to the what did, What's that? What was that? I don't know. Updates available. What? What are you trying to show us, Bree? While we're talking. 
Huh? I, I'm just uh, organizing here, but this is a platinum award that I got for a band I worked with. Oh, okay. Very. You nice. have one of these, Alex? No, but I have two two Emmys. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Sports. They used to give these out to radio oh, people, oh, too, Also an RIAA uh, 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 award as well. So. But you got, a, you got a Bay Area Hall of Fame thing, don't you? Oh, I'm also in the Bay Area Hall of Fame. Right. I got that for Pittsburgh. Who, what? <laughs> Nothing. You're in the Pittsburgh Just... Radio Hall of Fame? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Anyway. Uh, music industry. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but anyway... Um, uh, so I mean, you know, we're we're we're. It, it, I'm very tense about this because I I know what's going to happen election night. Democrats are going to mail in their ballots. Okay, so they're not going to be counted till the next day or maybe within the week. Thanks. In the meantime, the Republicans are going to go to the polls, and when the votes come in that night, it's going to look like Trump won. If yeah. it doesn't happen like that on election night, I'm going to be amazed. But what's going to happen is he's suddenly going to claim he's the victor. And then he's going to try and keep those other votes from being counted. Yeah. yeah. And, and if they are counted, and of course it comes out that he's been trounced, he's going to court and going to yeah. argue those votes should not be counted. And that is going to take us well into January when on January 20th Nancy Pelosi becomes president of the United States. That'd be nice. <laughs> mm, it's going to be Trump. Oh, well, we got yeah. this one in the mail yesterday. What? If you plan to vote by mail, plan ahead. Yes. 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 There's there's yeah. so many problems. There's one state now where they said that the postmaster general couldn't get the ballots out or in or something. Was it Georgia? Or so, there's to make there's a change. So many problems. There's no way we, we, we can have an accurate vote. We just cannot. I think. I, I, but, I but, uh, how, how, uh, will you tell me this, Bree? How is it you claim we have an accurate vote when people go to a polling place and then somehow those ballots get lost on the way to the central place where they count them? That's why. It's 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 the human condition. It's human nature. Well, then we, then we I don't see I don't I, I, I think you have more of a paper trail with a mail in ballot that has a barcode on it and a signature. Well, I, it, I don't understand why we can't use blockchain for this. You know, blockchain is supposed to be the, the future. Why can't we do voting? Because we don't blockchain? have it right now. Hmm. That's well, the reason why. And that's why Trump's going to yeah. be your president. Yes. And, yes. John Larkin. Yeah. So um, every state does the counting themselves, and then they report it to uh, yeah. somebody. But, but I mean, you the know, the Federal Election Commission. Yeah, it's run by a Each state is responsible for, uh, you know, um, doing their own count. Yes. But have you have you heard what's his name, Howard Stone or Roger Stone? His what he's saying? No. He's been saying uh, the uh, that they should declare martial law and go marching into the state of Wisconsin and just take all the ballots, you know, and just shut the whole thing down. And he's, he's fucking nuts. And well, and, uh, I mean, it, uh, it, Trump is going to use this to make a big deal out of the fact that oh, I've won. I've won yeah. and uh, I've been robbed. I'm being robbed. And even if the vote is like, you know, 10 percent more for Biden than for Trump. He's going to he's going to be claiming that yeah. he's going to tell his base, you should you should go do this. You should go do this. And yeah. It's going to end up in mob scenes on the street. And it's going to be well, anarchy. be sure you vote twice. Yeah. You know, Stupid. make sure you go down to the uh, uh, <clears throat> you go down to your po go to your polling place, but also mail your ballot in. Now, what happens if that happens? They, they do have a way of checking against that, don't they? They do, yes. I mean, like if I go, if I go, if I vote by mail and then I go across the street and vote, they have a way of checking whether I've already voted or not. Yeah, well, you, you, you can only vote with the ballot that you have. Everybody gets a ballot, one ballot. Oh, so you can walk, you can walk it down to your down to your polling place. You know what we're doing here. What we're doing here is that you can take your ballot, walk it over to your polling place, and just give it to them. You don't have to even go in and vote. That's yeah. what I do. Uh, yeah, if you, if you get 
the way our polls work is if you go in, if you've already mailed yours in, right. and you try and mail and try and uh, try and vote again, mm -hmm. when we check you in, yeah, we already know that you voted. Oh, uh, okay. No, no. If, if you go in after you've already voted with your actual ballot, they'll give you a provisional, and you can no. use that. You can't even do, well. Funny. At least in my county, where I run the polls at my place, really? we check you in, and we can yeah. tell you you already voted. Right. Oh, really, Jeff? You, 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 get, you won't even get a ballot. Yeah. Yeah. I thought it was true that if you voted in one place and then you you tried to vote again, regardless of where the place was, that you're automatically your name is taken off. Yeah, it'll, it'll show up it'll, yeah. In, in our electronic books. It'll show up okay. as you voted already. Oh. What? Okay. Well, well, find... We can give you another one, but it won't count. Mm -hmm. <coughs> you should find people. Yes. You never divide your yeah. 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 We're also yeah. suggesting that people who who mail in their ballots mm -hmm. also go to the polling places. Well, that's yeah. what Trump right. said. Because, yeah. like, like you're saying, if if you, you showed up that you already voted, right. and yeah. you can't vote. Well, what is the way of you checking that your vote has been counted? Because, because okay, we are never And if it was denied, lost, you, you uh, get a new one. Yeah. I'll tell you this. Yeah. In California, you see, you're we never, have to see all the... Wait, hold on a second, Bree. What? What, Kevin? You're never denied the right to vote. But if you show up and you've shown that you have voted, we'll let you vote, but it'll be a provisional vote and it won't count. And we'll tell you that. Okay. Say, we yeah. show you that you have voted already. Right. Mm -hmm. but right. We'll give you a ballot and you can vote it. It'll be a provisional vote, but when you get it there and it's counted, it won't be counted. Mm -hmm. We'll right. tell you that straight up. Right. John, John, as far as the envelope Sorry. goes into a yellow. You're looking at the wrong end. It gets John, counted you, as a yellow. It, it, as far as the, vo the voter is concerned, if he wants to check that their mail in vote was counted, they go to the polling place. And they will tell you, no, you've already voted. Correct. You do that on that is the way okay, John, John, on John, John Larkin's been trying to say something and all this along. year. Yes, let John. me say one more thing, please. Yeah. This year, you can track your vote online. Yeah. Okay. Uh, you can go yeah, online right, yeah. and go. find your that you yeah. voted already. Uh, John Larkin. Yeah. What What I've happened to me a lot of times is I'll, I'll lose my ballot, and I you know because I'm irresponsible if it's not an important vote. I'm not going to lose it this year, but. Um, what ha what happens is when I show up, I go, hey, I lost my ballot. So they get, then they give you a provisional that says, well, you know, you can yeah. use this, but it's not going to count. You know, I mean, up to a certain time, I guess. <laughs> no, that, they'll take it back. And they'll make sure you didn't vote. Yeah, yeah. Check everything back, and then if it's if it's good, they'll they'll count. Right, it. yeah. But that hey, probably Kevin. won't happen until like a week after. Uh, you know the the things over. Yeah, it's it takes time. It takes yeah. you know we. Yeah. But it goes into a certain envelope, and then it goes into a certain bag, and then it goes to a certain file back at the office. Right. Yeah. yeah. Uh, uh, obviously, you've worked polling places before. Mm. I've worked polling places <laughs> the last four or five elections. Yeah. 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 Uh, and Kevin, have, has it always <laughs> been perfect? Has it always been perfect? At my at my places, it has. <laughs> I've stayed extra hour counting. Mm -hmm. So, yes. Uh, wait a minute. Okay. Well, hold on a second. People are raising their hand. Uh, first, Robert, and then Jeff. Robert, can anybody see the interview with Ben Ginsburg? Ben Ginsburg is probably the prominent yeah. Republican voting election expert, mm -hmm. and he did an interview this weekend where he said that Republicans at some point did um, an investigation of 16 million ballots across the country and found exactly four, four <laughs> cases yeah. where there was a potential for fraudulent voting. And, and, he's, and he's a Republican guy and that, he's a um, Republican. That, that's, yeah. that sued for Bush yeah. in front of the Supreme Court back yes. in Bush v. Gore. Yes. So yes. that guy's an expert. Jeff, you had your hand up. Yeah, my question is, I actually moved since, uh, I got my driver's license oh, in a different good. location. What do I have to do now? Yeah, so re-register re -register your, your address. Yeah, go to, go to your voting place and- You can do it online. Yeah. Just go to your I'll local county office. 
go to your county office or go online to your local county right uh, election office and just re-register your address well i'll tell you what happened marjorie uh, we 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 you know uh, signed in up for mail in voting and um, Marjorie, uh, when we had the primaries, Marjorie got a ballot, but I didn't. And I wondered if they knew that I was, you know. And then I suddenly realized I'm registered independent. And so I'm not allowed to vote in the primaries. But I, I forgot that completely. You know. But, I mean, um, I, I, I... You're looking at the wrong end. You should. What did you say, Bree? I say you're looking at the wrong end. You're looking at the micro, but Trump looks at the macro and his lawyers, are, the two elections you gotta look at are, are Gore Bush and Al Franken. Those will give you a lot of insights, but when you have someone who has a lot of money and a lot of lawyers and has all the evidence, my question is when Kevin is done with it, he counts it, he sends it to somebody. It, it, at some point, there's somebody no, who has to serve Kevin, by them. Kevin carries it to the office and then Kevin watches it go into the where they're counted and then that's all public room. So you can sit there and watch it all happen. It's broadcasted on a big TV. You can see all the provisionals. You can see them uh, actually looking at signatures. It's all it's all on a big TV there. And you yeah. can sit there and watch it happening. And, and they have to be certified by someone. At some, They're at certified the the day, once all the counts are done, yeah. Okay, is that by the governor or the lieutenant it's governor? It's by the uh, state secretary. You're trying to find some loophole here, aren't you, Bree? <laughs> what I'm so, saying so is, the, wait, and the, the fact is, the fact is, you're talking to an expert on this. Somebody who so actually what, what, does all, this. Well, all, all let me tell you, somebody who's. I, I used to. I used to be a manager at a at a video store. Yeah, well, that we can makes, never get the cash register. Yeah, right that makes you qualified. That makes you qualified to run an election. No, <laughs> would you well, like I'm to vote for Trump, or would you like a copy of Scarface? Kevin's been Santa Claus. Come on. No, I know you what you're talking about. You tell me it's perfect. I don't believe you because the hu humans make yeah, mistakes. Well, anyway. It's like every You know who we haven't heard from is tonight perfect. is Charlie, who's got his hand up right now. Charlie? I'll oh, forget what I was talking about. <laughs> changed the subject so many times. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, in, in well, Texas... Because, you, because, of course, every election's been perfect. Will right, you Charlie? let I mean, Charlie, been, please, will you let Charlie well, say what, what he... Will you let Charlie say what he has to say? Charlie. In, uh, in, in, in Texas, you can't vote twice. If you've tried to vote twice, they'll find out immediately. Yeah. And, and if you're committing a felony, and you'll go to jail. Yeah. That's plenty and of they'll shoot you. Yeah. That's and you also have to remember. Mail, when if you've already voted by mail, and you go, I don't care if it's, you, it's next week. All right, so it's next week, but what, you're going to go to jail. You're going to tell me that millions of Trump people are, are going to get thrown in jail for voting twice just to help Donald Trump? No, they're not going to do that. Right. right. So, so what Trump is doing is just feeding the beast. He's trying to brainwash everybody into fee, fee, thinking that something's going to happen. Mm -hmm. That's yeah. all he's doing. He's, he's setting it all up. Yeah. Evan has nailed doing. it. Right. Like he's like Bella Lugosi in that movie Ed Wood mm -hmm. when Ed Wood goes to him after he's OD'd and mm -hmm. he goes, "Why are you talking to the press?" And and uh, he goes, "Ah, you know, all, any press is good press, you know." He's <laughs> making Trump. everybody think. That's all. Yeah, yeah. that's just Trump. Just any anything. As long as he's out there, his name's out there. He doesn't and if give you look at if you look at Trump's history in New York, that's what he's always done. Yeah. The music is playing, ladies and gentlemen. The Bloody theme, the lovely Ooh. and attractive theme song. And I want to I want to thank our panel tonight. This has been really nice. Do you like this, Scott? I love huh? you. I love it. And, I love and, it. And, and look at what we get as a bonus. We get Adrian to She's finish awake. off the show. <laughs> hey. That's the happiest kid in the world. Yeah. 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 Uh, first, thanks to Fred. Fred, we love having you here. Please. <laughs> More of you, more of you. Charlie Wallace, always great to have you here. Robert Natale, nice having you as a regular. Jeff Stein, good friend, love having you here. Of course, John Larkin, under his various guises. Scott Boddicker, good to have you here. Huge Jassel, uh, nice to have you here. Kevin, thanks, Bree, really appreciate your input. And uh, there is, of course, Brian. What? <laughs> What'd you say? And she wants to, 
She's talking her own language. Say goodnight. Is that her own language? <laughs> Good night, everybody. <laughs> wave goodbye to her. <laughs> okay. And I'll wave goodbye back at you. Okay. Good night, everybody. Thank you for joining me. Okay. That's our citizen panel for tonight. Man, that's pretty terrific. It was a good show tonight. Really enjoyed everybody. Uh, we'll uh, we'll be back again uh, tomorrow night, I guess. Yeah. Same time, same station in life. In the meantime, as always, stay tuned for Jack Bishop. He's next on GabNet. And if you see her, tell her I love her. And by the way, stay safe out there and make sure you wear a mask. Bye.